Okay, so up until now, we've seen a multitude of different ways that you could work on individual footage into Autopano Video Pro and Autopano Giga. But sometimes it's not enough to just work on one single sequence and render it as one single sequence. In a lot of cases, especially uh, here at GoPro, where we are doing a lot of uh, complicated shoots, you are going to need to go into some way more advanced post-production. I'm not going to give you a full lesson on After Effects and compositing and keyframing, uh, but I do want to give you a little example of what you can do uh, with that kind of advanced workflow. So we have uh, here two sequences uh, that were shot inside one car. So the first sequence, um, it's, it's two different stitches for one single sequence. And the first one, as you can see here, is called inside. And so the stitching was really concentrating on the inside of the car. But you can see here that we have some problems here, some parallax issues. And if we go for the outside footage, uh, the outside now doesn't have any issues, but you can see that we have some problems on the door here, on the mirror, on the um, A pillar, and here on the sun visors. So we have a few different problems that we need to solve, and we can, the idea here is to combine those two sequences. The, all, the advantage you also have in that situation is that uh, you can have two different exposure settings, one that's going to be good for the inside but with the outside blown up and one that's going to be good for the outside but with the inside slightly underexposed. So we've got our two sequences here into After Effects and we are going to create a new comp from selection and we're going to call that Comp two, and we're going to have inside and outside. And so the idea here is going to be to select the pen tool. And we're going to start creating a mask for our footage. So I'm going to do this roughly, but obviously you would try to be as careful and as precise as possible. This is what is going to make good footage or not. And here we obviously want to invert our mask so that we have Only the part that we like. We can feather that a little bit. Now you can see that the problem in a situation like that is that if you get the outside again, you're going to have some multiple issues. Here we have the pillar twice and we also have uh, the rear mirror twice. And this is where you can use something called mesh warp that you're going to put on the outside comp. You can sort of adjust the number of uh, rows and columns you want and then using mesh warp you're going to be able to grab part of the image and adjust that slightly so that you match better your footage. And obviously the nice thing with After Effects is that you're going to be able to create a comp here for that part of the image and do that again for the other windows. So that's how you would sort of create these kind of seamless experiences would be by adjusting and correcting part after part after part of each of your sequences until you have those really seamless sequences with uh, the perfect exposure settings, the perfect composition, uh, no big problems between the inside, outside and stuff that are close to you and things that are uh, further away from the rig. This is really the amount of work you need to put in if you want to get to those absolutely perfect results. In some of the VR experiences that we've published uh, in the recent month, we have up to 
10, 15 layers that I count in together with keyframes and with animations on just really, really single parts of each video of each sequence uh, to make sure that all of those themes, all of those potential problems that you might encounter uh, are absolutely gone, absolutely invisible and, and we don't have any issue with them. So hopefully this gives you a little idea of the amount of work that goes into uh, each of those sequences. Now, as you can see in this video, there's still a hole in the back in that specific case. And in our downhill mountain bike experience that we're creating, we still have all the tripods and some problems with, for the example, a helmet cam and things like that, where we still need to patch them and, and work on this footage. So in the next tutorial, we are going to go back into Autopano Video Pro and Autopano Giga, and I will show you one of the techniques you can use to patch a tripod, especially in that situation. We're going to patch a helmet so we can use stabilization. Uh, the stabilization built in Autopano Video Pro uh, for tripods and things like that. We will do that a little bit later into Adobe Premiere. So I'll see you next time. Yeah, 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 yeah.